In this video traders, we're gonna look at grading or defining price momentum, little ways that we can grade the speed and aggression of the move. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. If you're a subscriber to the channel, appreciate your support. If you're not yet, consider doing so for more videos like this. All right, so a lot of trades and a lot of setups and strategies all talk about momentum. We wanna, look, we wanna get on momentum, we wanna see momentum, we wanna get on board it, we wanna define it, we wanna spot it, we wanna profit from it, all that kind of stuff. All very well and good, but how do we define momentum? And more importantly, how do we grade momentum? I talk a lot about in other videos about how I grade things with my green flags and red flag strategy, because not all momentum is the same. Some momentum is still momentum, but it might not be strong enough for a certain setup or strategy. Strategy. Some momentum might still be okay for specific strategies, but you need a way of grading it. You need like a checklist to say, hey, this is pretty good. This ticks all the boxes. I'm going to implement this amount of capital into this trade. Or you know what? There's a few red flags here. I'm going to be a little bit cautious and not be so aggressive. So let's have a look at some of the ways that I like to grade momentum, and you can chuck yours in the comment section below. All right. The length of the move. So what I mean by the length of the move? I mean how far the move has traveled in terms of pips, in terms of points, in terms of percentage, in terms of basis points, whatever you're measuring, whatever chart you're, you're trading. Obviously, well not so obviously, but I'd like to see a bigger, stronger move if the, without, if without a pullback. That's, that's pretty much the extra thing to add into that is without a proper pullback. You know, the longer the price goes before it pauses for breath, the more urgency people have got. And if, in the case of an uptrend, the more urgent buyers are stepping up and hitting those offers, hitting those offers, hitting those offers, causing price to tick up and up and up before they pause and sellers hit it. That is the sign of a strong, strong move if it's going a long way without pulling back, you know, and the magnitude of the move, length, magnitude, that's the sort of thing we're looking for, how far it goes. A shallow move, not so good, because if it only goes a small amount of time before sellers are hitting it and pushing it back, it means there's not as much aggression as we'd like. So that's one way that we start to look at it. Number two, the angle of the move. So this is kind of related between the length and the duration, but the angle is a good way of us visually looking at the move. And, you know, this is a great example of it. A strong move would be something that moves, a strong momentum would be something that moves in a very steep angle right up. In other words, it's moving a lot of distance. It's doing a lot of work to the upside in a very short period of time, as opposed to weak momentum, which is going to have a low angle because it's not doing a lot, it's not moving a lot, and it's taking a long time to do it. So we want to see duration of the move as short as possible. The perfect momentum is big price excursion, very short amount of time, and that is going to translate to a different angle. So that's easy for some, something for us to do, you know, if we're just using our eyeball and we're just looking at charts, we can say, hey, listen, that's strong momentum because it's got a good strong angle on it before we get the first pullback. That's really where I'm defining momentum before we get the first pullback. Okay, we might get one, two kind of pullbacks and we can redefine momentum after that, but we're looking for something that just continues to be aggressive. So good angle, good strong angle means stronger momentum. And that links to the duration of the move uh, before the first real kind of opposite sellers or opposite buyers hit it. Supply demand shifts a little bit. All right, now another thing we can do is we can look at some indicator readings. If we're using a moving average, it's the distance, we move something like the distance that price moves away from a moving average. Obviously the shorter term moving average price is moving away from it. You know, that's catching up, but we're still exhibiting good momentum. You know, if it's moving away from a 20 period, for example, you know, a long way, then that's just really powerful momentum. We can use stuff like Bollinger Bands, if we're breaking the upper Bollinger Band, flip it, reverse the lower Bollinger Band if we're downside momentum. If we're seeing constantly hugging that upper Bollinger or the upper Keltner, that's good sign of strong momentum because those standard deviation bands are normally keeping price contained. And if it's bursting out every single candle, you know that something's going on. Something like an oscillator in RSI, you want to see fresh highs in your RSI, fresh highs in your stochastics, fresh highs in your CCI, what other oscillators you're using. You don't want to see a divergence between the last high and this high. You want to see nice fresh highs, nice overbought conditions, rate of change, aggressive, all the indicators going to extreme readings. The better, more extreme they are, the more likely this thing is momentum. Okay, and then we'll look at volume change. So we wanna see not just the absolute volume, but the volume relative to how it was before this momentum ignition started. So you might have been trading, uh, you know, whatever value it is, a thousand, 
contracts a minute or a thousand contracts every 15 minutes, whatever time frame you're looking or you know, 100,000 a day, whatever time frame you're watching, all of a sudden momentum occurs, that changes to twice what it normally does or three times what it normally does, four or five or 10 times in some extreme examples, that is showing you that there's a lot of participants involved in it. Combine that with the angle of the move, the length of the move, the duration of the move, however you want to frame that, and volume, you know this thing is decent momentum and you can trade accordingly, you can position accordingly, you can look for the strategy that fits into that the best possible way. All right, uh, and by the way, one little way of doing that with volume, what might as well talk about it while we're talking about volume, is you can you put a moving average often on volume. So you can put a moving average, say for a 10 period moving average just on volume to give you 10 days if you're a swing trader or maybe you want a bit longer or whatever if you're trading. And then as price kind of breaks above it, you can see visually where the average is and see, hey, this is three, three, four times above the average volume. It's a very easy way of quantifying. Of course, if the coders of you out there, very easy to get that variable and push it into a piece of code and say, hey, um, I want to be alerted when current volume is greater than 10 times average volume and use the moving average formula. All right. The other one, the other one that people forget about actually, which is very, very useful, is the levels breached. We want to see this just ripping through levels. You know, solid momentum isn't it doesn't doesn't care about resistance. If that's the biggest resistance point we've seen in the last year or whatever it may be, and it's never been able to break through it. Not, if it's genuine momentum that comes out and usually is a catalyst for proper momentum, some sort of news catalyst or something, giving that a bit of a rocket it will just force its way through that. It won't even look at that. It won't even care about that because it becomes irrelevant. So it's ripping through levels. It's ripping through daily highs. It's ripping through weekly highs, 52 week highs. It's ripping through your channels. It's ripping through all those things that we normally put on our chart with disregard. So if we see that, we see a strong angle move with good length and good duration. Indicator readings are all very, very extreme. Volume has gotten way more than it has in the average and levels of breach. Generally, the sign is gonna be that you've got good, strong, solid price momentum and you want to position yourself accordingly. All right, guys, take care. See you in the next one. Keep the risk managed. Goodbye.